Welcome back. Thank you very much for joining me. My name is Swartik Mayanja, and this is the Mayanja Accredited News Network. We are on another episode of the Everyday Hero Show, where I have someone in your life or someone in my life that makes us smile but does not get the credit they deserve. Today, I am with Liam McDade, the man that took it from under me and became the Newton North record holder for the discus. Welcome to the show, Liam. There is no justice when so few have so much and so many have so little. How are you doing, Sparta? Wonderful. Thank you very much for coming on. I really do appreciate it. Uh, Liam, um, I know you from Newton North, from the track and field team, from the discus circle, from being the champion. Yep. Um, please tell us... Uh, you come up, where are you from, uh, who are you, and why uh, Discus slash why CrossFit? So I was um, born and raised in Newton, Massachusetts. Um, mm-hmm. I started Discus freshman year. Um, I got introduced to it by uh, my friend, um, Jesse Metzger. He was a wrestler, and he brought me over to Shoplet. I didn't know what shuffle was. I th- I, like I thought it was um a lot of the, people the don't. skeet shoe. Exactly. I had no idea. So um, I'm going over like at first I did not like discus at all. Mm-hmm. It, like nothing was going well for me. But then I started practicing at home. There you go. And like in my room, like eight o'clock at night, was like I'm doing you know spin drills. I just want a quick time out before you continue. He said practicing at home, out there for you youngins out there for you. People out there who want to be great at anything. He's saying practice at home on top of the practice at school. Just making sure that was known. So you were practicing at home, man. Mm-hmm. And then I just, you know, kept getting better at the process and mm-hmm. you know, de- um, developing a more technical. You just yeah, the just, movement yeah, was absolutely. better. Yeah. yeah. Um, and well, because of my size, I'm only five ten, exactly. and throwers are like six <laughs> foot, whatever, and you know, over two hundred pounds. It's not fair. It's not. Um, yeah. But yeah, I just kept working it on at home, doing everything that my coach tells me, and then as I progressed, I got better. Every I think every year I got better at least twenty feet until my senior year, I jumped thirty feet. 30 feet. Yeah. That's, that's a big jump, my friend. Mm-hmm. That's a big jump. Congratulations. Um, so uh, you said you, you did that. Um, so you got into uh, discus your freshman year, and you just stuck it through, even though you weren't the greatest at it. By the senior year, you jumped 30 feet from junior to senior year, and you broke records, yeah. uh, which is absolutely amazing. So uh, on top of that, um, I ha- I was two years ahead of you, right? Yep. Two years. So I graduated in 2012, 2014. Mm-hmm. Yep. And uh, when I graduated, I was uh, I was good. I was good. I was good at discus, right? Um, I'm not, and um, I was very close to breaking the record. I was like 160. What was the record? 163.11. 163. That's what you threw. No, I threw 168. He threw 168. Go for it. Yeah, I don't, even want to talk. I don't even want to talk about it. Yeah. So you threw 163. I'm pretty sure I threw like 161, 162 around there. Mm-hmm. Um, I was a couple of feet um, below the record. Um, but it was a great process. It, it really is, like he said, the process is where it's at. Um, the, the practicing day in and day out is where it's at. And it's a very difficult process because shot put, discus, it's not... Yes, of course, you think shot putters, you think discus, like you said, it's big guys and they do like, you know, big weights and, you know, they're just big. But it's also very, very, very technical. Yeah. Very technical. So can I just ask you, um, you also did wrestling. Yes. You you huge, you're big, you, you did wrestling all four years, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, so what's the difference between like the hard knocks of wrestling and the very tedious, minute um, like technique of discus. I think they both have um, pretty big similarities within mm. mental game. Yeah. But the biggest thing is like in a wrestling practice, you get you kind of like screamed at or like you know like pushed harder, like physically for like conditioning. But wow. in discus, it's all about connecting things within the technique. So yes. like you're getting the overall picture in a more relaxed state, but also you know, 
you're trying to kill PR. So of you course. Get, yeah, you got to get a little... Um, you, you get a little rowdy. Yeah. Exactly. A little rowdy at the end when you just that release. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. So uh, do you have any um, video at all of you throwing? First step. Fast left. Come on. Like not even the record one, but any of them. Yeah. You do. All right, so I just want you to send that to me. I'll be showing it down here somewhere. It'll be somewhere around here. You'll be seeing him throw that amazing discus technique. And technique is huge. So let's talk a little bit about my 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 old pal, Coach Bauer. Oh yeah. Coach Bauer. He did some amazing things for the both of us, right? Mm -hmm. Um he I honestly think he was just absolutely amazing. From taking and like a nobody, an average Joe, just a regular, you a regular guy, anyone, and making them, if they were willing to listen and put in the work, making them great. I honestly believe you give Bauer anybody, he can turn them into a state qualifying shot put a discus thrower. Not state champ, that's very yeah. chosen few, yeah. right? <laughs> chosen few. But I believe he could take any any person and turn them into a uh, state qualifying shot put or discus thrower. Um, your relationship with Bauer, um, I want to know what that relationship was and uh, where do you think, uh, I don't want to say you disagreed with him, but where was it, if there any, was there any tension? Um, not really any tension. Uh, he usually for lifting or um, how I trained, mm. he let me do it, whatever, because he usually saw it more work, you know, you're getting better. Exactly. So like he's more the bodybuilder kind of type lifting and more of the Olympic and CrossFit yes. type yes, of lifting. Yes, yes, So there, um, other than that, like within technique, we would also like bounce it each other, um, off each other. Yes. With different um, things that we heard of, things that we saw on like YouTube videos. Mm. So there wasn't um, conflict, but like, just him being there every day really helped me and like having someone to like see it like every time he's very good at just yeah. seeing the like the minor things and making <laughs> a quick change yes he is he, he is very good at doing that he is very good yes. um so you did mention it and i'm happy you mentioned it because that's a great great transition um you said that he's more of the power lifting and you're much more of the olympic lifting verse and crossfit uh, mm -hmm. So, when did you get into CrossFit? And uh, tell us a little bit about that, uh, um, your senior year in CrossFit. So, I got into CrossFit, I think it was sophomore year of mm -hmm. my um, high school. And uh, with, um, what's his name? Oh, Scott McDonald. Scott uh, McDonald? Yeah, he got I'm not familiar with... Is he a teacher? Is he a friend? Uh, he's is he... a wrestler. He was a wrestler. He was a wrestler. Okay. Redhead, all right. All right. Yeah. Okay. Um, he so he like suggested I should do it because um, mm -hmm. he's he worked with Matt Frankel. Oh yes. Yeah. Very good. Um, I did a video with Matt Frankel. Please check it out. I'll put a link somewhere here. Yeah. So he he suggested that I should do it, and then one morning I woke up. I had to do it in the morning, so I woke up at five in the morning good and for you. went every day for five thirty classes. Yes. So before school, so I could go to school and then practice after. Jesus. Um, <laughs> so I was doing that. I, it's really interesting. I feel like I kind of fell into it. Yeah. I didn't actually like, I saw it and was like, wow, this is the best thing ever. Like I kept going every day and just falling in love with it. Like every single day. Okay. So, so when you say, <clears throat> so you said you just woke up one day at 5 a.m. and you decided, why not? Let me try yeah. it. Mm -hmm. um, so then how did that trying it one time turn into, I'm willing to do this every single day? Because that's a very big jump. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So how did that happen? I think it was the same way that I got into discus. It was mm -hmm. like, I wasn't, I was terrible at the beginning, but as you start to, you know, seek PRs and like, you know, getting better looking for like <laughs> physically. That always helps. Yeah. That always, I, I can't <laughs> lie. It's kind of a, like, I'd yeah. say 50, 50, the looks are half of the reason I went to CrossFit. Um, no, but it makes sense. It does. It really does make sense. And I also started because of Matt Franco. Um, he's a he, he, he CrossFit gym. Is that the gym you went to? Did you go to Matt Franco's? Or no, I went to um, CrossFit Newton. CrossFit Newton. Owned by um, Gil, Gilad Cohen, who's um, his, uh, her, his, 
his wife is Jody Cohn. She yes. works at Newton North. Yes, and she's a biology teacher. Yeah. Yes, Miss um, Cohen. Thank you for allowing Liam to go to your gym because uh, because of your gym and all the work you've put in this guy, he's now the champion at um, Discus. Uh, so <clears throat> your sophomore year, you got into it. Mm -hmm. When did you make that jump from, I'm into this, I like it, it's working for me, I'm liking the results, to this is something I want to do long term? I think it was probably my senior year when I started a, um, a capstone project about mm -hmm. it. Thank you. Yes. So I got, um, I did like a three month period of where I would do CrossFit for like three times a day, you know, mixing in. Three times a day? Yeah. A day? Like, well, like with different like mobility, you know, That's working insane. on all the uh, 10 levels of, um, you know, physical things that you can do. So like uh, flexibility, strength, um, power and all that. Oh, conditioning. And yeah, all. yeah. So like, okay, I know. Mm -hmm. yeah. So and that then, big triangle thing. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I'll put a picture up somewhere. Yes. And then also doing a paleo diet. That's oh, where I really started oh, seeing God. results and was like okay this could definitely work but right now actually this summer i was like 208 pounds and i lost 30 pounds are you serious yes you lost 30 pounds i'm like one, you, it's 176 are you strictly paleo i'm not paleo i'm more well right now i'm whatever my mom cooks me but <laughs> <laughs> it's mainly a I lot of the vegetables honesty. yeah a lot of vegetables and like lean meats and no like bread or carbs oh wow yes yeah. okay so that's uh that's a difficult diet to stick to yeah i respect you for doing mm -hmm. it good for you um but but so uh you do your paleo your diet you did the capstone um three days a week seven days a week i mean three times a day seven days a week or was it three times a day three days a week three times a day um four you know like how it was like yeah an every day an everyday thing yeah my god mm -hmm. my goodness um, so long term, so do you see yourself as a CrossFit competitor? Is that something you definitely see yourself doing? Uh, I do see it. It's very hard. Um, oh, my goodness. Getting the regionals. Forget is, get about it. It's Im impossible. But I think with the right style of training and, like, if I can devote all my time to it, exactly. then exactly. maybe I would have a shot. But That's the thing. Because um, so CrossFit uh, – CrossFit, I feel like, blew up, right? I, I don't think, like, CrossFit had, like, a steady incline. I think it, like, legitimately blew up. Compared to, like, I would have to say, I'm not huge in the UFC world, but I honestly believe that UFC started and it, can, you know, gradually got bigger, 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 bigger. Conor McGregor, there was a spike. Ronda Rousey, there was a spike. And now it's huge. But... CrossFit, it was like nothing, nothing, nothing. I'd say 2000 and like 9, 10, you know, you'd hear things about it, but it was like some crazy, you know, cult thing. And then 2012, 13, boom. Like CrossFit's the shit. Like it's huge. And now it's everywhere. It's on ESPN. Like everyone knows Rich Froning. Everybody knows like these superstar athletes. Um, Sarah Sigmund's daughter, all these, you know, uh, what's her name? Camille LeBlanc? Camille LeBlanc. I love her. That's She's awesome. Yeah. I love her. Um, anyways, uh, so it did blow up. Um, do you believe, I know you've seen the results for yourself. You, I know that you've um, done it and it's helped you become a better athlete at, um, in track and field. So, But do you honestly believe track, I mean CrossFit, is for everyone and can make their lives better? I do think so. Yeah. Um, a big part of it for me, like, is the actual, you know, nutritional side. Mm -hmm. But, like, getting in, seeing um, coaches every day, you know, getting, like, a more community-based kind of um, helping each other up is going to see results, um, you know, promote results to, like, a larger community instead of, like, just, like, athletes who are, like, in exactly. high school or like college level athletes. So if you get more people in the community, you know, poor, more people are getting healthy. It's gonna, it's doing good things. I really, I um, and I agree with you. I mean, like you are my third, fourth, my fourth CrossFit oriented interview. Like I love this CrossFit thing. I love this process. I think it's absolutely amazing. Uh, it's just, it's just. Like I, I told all of my other CrossFit interviews, my guests, that I, it, it, for people who are not already into it, 
it looks scary. Oh, it yeah. looks intimidating. Mm-hmm. It looks like it's a little too much because what they see is those YouTube videos of you know the Rich Fronings, the Noah Olsons, the you know Dan Bailey's doing yeah. like a thousand pounds a hundred times in a row. Um, but they don't go to an actual gym and see the fifty-five-year-old lady who's doing just a bar, yeah. or the uh, seeing the pregnant woman who's doing literally cleans. Like it's yeah. like amazing. You see everyone through the full gamut. Um, but I think CrossFit in general is doing a really good job because on their Instagram they've been showing all these people, people with disabilities, people with um, missing a limb, and I think they've mm-hmm. done a really, really good job of making it. Like not believable, but like actually showing that it's possible for everybody to do CrossFit. So your goals, you want to be a competitor if you can um, commit to doing it 100% of the time. How do you plan on making it possible that you do CrossFit 100% of your day? Um, probably just with job prospects, you know, trying to maybe open my own gym. There you go. Or maybe, um, you know, getting like an apartment and like just like coaching and like like living minimally, so I can do all the things that I need to be able to do. I mean, that's it. it sounds like that's it's gonna be. Yeah, it's it's yeah. you have to devote like exactly. all your time. The, yeah, what I'm saying is that the amount of dedication it takes to say I want to work out. Yeah. All day, every day is a lot. Mm-hmm. It's a lot. It's a lot. It's a lot. It's a lot. Yeah. The CrossFit Open is here, my friend. Yeah. The CrossFit <laughs> Open is here. We are a day before 17.3 comes out. Tell us how has your journey throughout the CrossFit Open thus far has been? Uh, 17.1 was pretty bad for me. Mm. I am not good at cardio. Yeah. Um, I redid that workout and I got through the 40 dumbbell snatches got over to the box did one burpee got up and then almost just passed out oh, no. it was not good oh, no. so wait wait do you remember what the workout is so so the people know yeah so it was um 10 reps with a 50 pound dumbbell or a 35 dumbbell for the woman mm-hmm. and then it would go to 15 burpees then it would go to 20 of the reps for the dumbbells then 15 burpees and then all the way up to 50. yes um so uh, but then there was a time cap 20 20 minutes 20 minutes time cap um and you wanted to just try to get it all done before uh and uh if you just go on the if you go online and you look at the leaderboard you see the top i don't even want to say 10. if you look at the top 150 the top 200 the, the the times the, the the numbers are insane. Oh yeah, it's insane. It's insane. So for those people out there that think um, they can be CrossFit athletes, you got another thing coming because you heard it yourself. Mm-hmm. You have to dedicate your entire day, your life. This has to be something that you want to do yeah. long term. It can't just be like let me jump in and try this seventeen point one thing and yeah. I'll get into the regionals. That's uh, that's unheard of. It's not real. Let's get a check. Yeah, I've been uh, doing CrossFit for five years and I've way you know yeah. behind everyone. Exactly, so. exactly. So to get into that the, the the league, to get into the regional, to get into the CrossFit games, you need to have dedicated years to this craft. It can't just be something yeah. you start the day before. Um so I, I appreciate it. Like I, I do because it, it it we need more people to like say this out loud because CrossFit um is Basically, just working out. Yeah, yeah it's no, hard. It, is, it is basically just working out. So if someone says, like, I don't go to the gym every day, like, I can do mm-hmm. this, you can. And please come and do CrossFit. Yes. But don't put yourself in the categories of, like, I can compete mm-hmm. because that takes, that's a whole different lead. That's a whole oh, different yeah. level. That's something else. You can't just jump into it. Um, Liam, uh, so you are, so you now are just, uh, let's, I want to talk about your journey after high school. Where did you go? Um, where are you right now? And you know, like, let's talk a little bit about that. Uh, let's find out. So you, after high school, you decided to do discus at. I try. I tried. So I tried to walk on to the the University of Oregon team. Mm-hmm. That is a very, very hard. Intense. That's like the CrossFit Games of track. And exactly. Field. I mean, Oregon is humongous. Yeah. First of all. Second of all, it's a. It's it's a. Absolutely amazing. I mean, they had like the pen oh, relays. Yeah. They do the big, 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 you know, they're, they're like big yeah. 12. They're the shit. Mm-hmm. Um, so how did that go? 
So I have like my numbers were very were decent for their school, mm-hmm. but they look at more of longevity, and I am only a five ten athlete. So they're they're trying to get like you know the over six foot, you know, yeah. over like two twenty kind of guys. Exactly. So so they in their eyes they said, oh, so this might be your peak. You're not yeah. gonna grow from here. Versus like your numbers are good, so let's see what you can do. Yes. Um, do you think you would have in in your in your own perception perspective? Would do you think you could have hung with the big boys? I could have, but it would have been a longer journey. So like, like I wouldn't have gotten like, like you know strides in the way that the the bigger athletes were getting. Definitely, because they they just have the body type for it. Yeah, and and I can I, I come to I I have come to understand that because um, yeah. Bauer, our high school coach, okay. was huge on technique, um, and that was like like that was like what we did. I'd say eighty percent of the day in practice was okay. technique, and then the the twenty would be like we'll have like you know we'll go to the gym or something, or we'll just throw as much as we possibly could, but. 80% of it was technique. So we were just super, super great at technique. Whereas other schools, they did the opposite. Yeah. I, I just, not that I knew it, not that I know it. It's because when you go to the event, when you go to the meet, you'd see other athletes throw and you'd be like, what kind of, that's yeah. bullshit. They're shuffling through yeah. the damn circle. Uh-huh. You know what I mean? So like, obviously they weren't paying attention to technique. Yeah. They were just all to, a muscle, muscle, muscle. So it is difficult because... Yeah. Good I'm, prospects if I want to become a coach. Right exactly, yeah. exactly. Because like it just it just makes sense that like Bauer gets you to be as great as you possibly can, as much as he can do, mm-hmm. right? And then so if you were to go to another school and they would say, you know, we're looking for a bigger guy, it makes sense. Yeah. So after that, what did you decide to do? I decided to move back to the East Coast. Mm-hmm. Um, I took a semester at Mass Bay Community College, which. Had great professors. Wonderful. I, um, I, I went to Mass Bay. That's where I got my nursing degree. I, forever, I would love. And I, it's just, it's it's a great place because it's, you, you take a little bit of time out of your life and you just notice that, like, it's not just the young 18, 19 year olds oh, yeah. that are trying to change their life. It mm-hmm. really gets you to open your eyes to, like, education is for everyone should be for everyone, and people shouldn't be afraid to do it. Um, and it really has... Uh, I think I've learned a lot from Mass Bay. So I have a lot of respect, and I am where I am today because of Mass Bay. So much love. Um, After Mass Bay, you took a semester there. Yep, I took a semester. And then I transferred just now to Sacred Heart University. Sacred Heart University. Um, So what's the plan there? You're going to be the the, the head of the CrossFit club? You're going to be part of the track team? What's the plan? What are we doing? Uh, So I'm probably... Going to oh, I'm going to be on the track team, so mm-hmm. um, good for you. Pays the bills, <laughs> um, but I also might be coaching as a because um, we have a CrossFit gym in the lobby of one of the dorm rooms. That's amazing. I know it's amazing. That is amazing. So maybe I can balance between coaching there if you know if I get offered a job mm-hmm. and throwing, but definitely throwing is a priority for me because of. Um, you know, I want to seek more goals between that. Exactly. I mean, it makes sense. I mean, because CrossFit has helped you, you know, peak. Not peak, because we're still getting better. Yeah. But it, it helped you get to where you uh, are um, in throwing. And you do like, want to see is how good you can possibly get. Yeah. Um, I don't see anything wrong with that. Mm-hmm. Um, Liam, it's been an absolute pleasure. I really do appreciate you coming and being on the show. But what I do with everybody, I call this an Everyday Hero podcast show, interview series, whatever you want to call it, I consider you to be an everyday hero. And I don't just say that lightly, I actually mean it. So why don't you give some advice to the young shot putters and to the young crossfitters, let's, not shot putters, discus throwers. Let's start with track and field discus throwers. Any advice to give to that? Just come in every day, be willing to work. Um, it's not going to happen overnight. Technique is probably the hardest thing to like exactly keep like like you could have it one day and then the next day (laughs) it's like gone so you just keep keep practicing you know listen to your coach um look it up online and then you'll have a better um you know technique uh, like you'll have a better advantage against the other throwers definitely because 
I'm only 5'10", and I throw a lot farther, or a good amount farther than, like, bigger athletes. No, you throw a lot farther. <laughs> let's, let, let's be real. Let's be real. You throw yeah. a lot farther than the bigger athletes. Uh, I'm... Uh, it's just it's just plain it's a fact it's not like even a question about it you do you have the record at no north i mean that's how we know you are good at what you do Mm -hmm. um so that's good um crossfit and this is big this is big for me this is really really big for me because like i am huge 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 i'm trying to tell people crossfit is definitely something you should try before you dismiss it so give me give the people some advice for people who are new to crossfit people who or thinking about trying CrossFit, what do you have to say to that? Just um, like track, you know, come in, but like be ready for like scales and just be like everyone's at like a different level. People like either work in PVC pipe or like heavy barbells, exactly. but just know that the intensity will be the same. But like everyone's, you know, trying to get like fitter in the same way, like. No, I know what you're yeah. saying. I mean, I mean, like if someone with the PVC pipe can only do the PVC pipe, yeah. is working next to someone who can only do 135 pounds, the intensity of both of you guys are going to be the same. It's just the, the weight shouldn't be something that scares you away. It definitely shouldn't be something that scares you away. It's just you have to scale things based on your body, based on your physical fitness level. Um, and I respect that. Yeah. I respect that. A- anything else? Is For it, me, using yeah. a PVC pipe is actually way harder than like a heavy barbell. Because like, <laughs> my I'm trying to work on more of my mobility, but like, mm. trying to move perfectly with a PVC pipe is probably the hardest thing. You'll like start sweating, your face <laughs> turn red, you'll be like on the floor dying. After. Exactly. You, so you heard it. I mean, he's five years into the damn yeah. game. Um, so uh, using a PVC pipe, and I agree with you wholeheartedly because uh, I never have to be more conscious of my technique when I am using a PVC pipe. Because when you're using a PVC pipe, it's so light, it's like nothing. You can do whatever you yeah. want to do, but it really makes you think about the technique. You just feel uncomfortable. There's no weight. There's no counterweight. So uh, I, I agree. I think I agree, but I don't do it that much. I think you right now you're much bigger of a crossfitter than I am, but um, no, much love, uh, Liam. I really love this. I love having people on. Thank um, you. Five years from now, when you are um, going into the CrossFit regionals, when you're getting into the CrossFit <laughs> games, Maybe. five years from now, when you are the greatest shot putter slash discus thrower in Sacred Heart history. Uh, five years from now, when you own your own CrossFit gym, and I ask, Liam, can I come by and get another interview? Would you You'll do be coaching. Me? Hey, <laughs> you heard it. I'm a coach. It's done. Yeah. I'm done. Let me just kind of sign the papers. Thank you, Liam. It's been an absolute pleasure. Of course.